We have a rundown of a city water situation as of 1 p.m. today. Mr. Bill Deinslager, Chief of the Water Division, reports that water is serving these areas. Mountain View, Grand View Gardens, City View, Bernard, most of Fairview, most of the, the uh, South Edition, Forest Park, and part of the business district where the water mains are in good condition. The water division crews are continuing their excellent all-out efforts to restore service elsewhere as fast as possible. The Turnigan area is not expected to have water service before the end of this week or early next week. People there will have to continue utilizing the water tankers supplied by the military or get their containers filled in the areas that have service. Government Hill residents may have water tonight or Tuesday. Tanker service has been furnished at the Hollywood Shopping Center on the hill and through a temporary hose extending from Ellendorf Air Force Base. Some of the water mains are frozen, some service lines are frozen. The Public Works Department has two thawing machines touring areas where the water system has been turned on to relieve frozen service connections. Where the freezing is in the mains themselves, thawing may take as long as two weeks. Mr. Dineslager urges everyone to use the city water system sparingly. Where the water is not yet on, it is best to leave faucets closed and open them every two to three hours to see when service is ready. I'll return you now to Communications Central. We'll have more news from the city civil defense headquarters as soon as it becomes available. Jeannie. Yes. I have uh, the Sid Wolcott family uh, reporting in that they are safe. Do you have that on your current uh, missing list? Sid Wolcott, we have it here at the KFQD studios on our missing list. Uh, Wolcott, no, this isn't on the revised list. Okay, Gene, thanks an awful lot. We'll okay, see you later now. That was uh, Jeannie reporting in from the city civil defense office to KFQD and uh, letting us know that these various things are happening just as any time that they have important information for us, we will cut into whatever we're doing and, of course, put them right on the air. We have a report here to remove from the missing list, which uh, they are not using, the, uh, or they don't have this name on their list, and so it's obviously uh, clear at civil defense already. Sid Wolcott and his family, they're staying with Tom Day and their family, in case anyone friends of theirs and wants to uh, know where they are. Thank you, Ron. Okay. We uh, want to remind you once again that at 8 o'clock tonight, Governor William A. Egan will address the people of the state of Alaska. And, uh, of course, you'll hear that address here at your civil communications uh, base station, KFQD. We're operating at 10,000 watts of power. Clear channel, 730 kilocycles. We'll continue to operate 24 hours a day until such time as this emergency ends. We're going to have a complete summary of the news coming up in just a short while. Forms are on the way to Anchorage for residents to use to recover savings bonds lost in the earthquake. Treasury Department is making arrangements now to give top priority claims in this area. As soon as they arrive, KFQD will announce their location where you can pick them up. This comes from Mrs. Helen Fisher, the State Director for U.S. Treasury Division. And her number is Fairfax 24686. So don't worry about the bonds that you may have lost. Those are perfectly safe. The United States government stands behind them 100%. Daryl Waneka of the Salvation Army says they need five to ten women for making sandwiches and helping in the kitchen. So. If you don't have anything to do today and you would like to keep your hands busy, would you please report to the Salvation Army? Daryl Waneka says they need women to make up sandwiches there in the kitchen. About uh, 10 women are needed, five to 10 women. They have a question here. When will residents at 3rd and A be given a pass to go into their houses? Oh, well, we don't know the answer to this. Possibly someone listening, one of the officials can answer that. Uh, they are working as fast as they possibly can to get the situation cleared up in there. Could very well be that it's too dangerous at this point to, to uh, just to let residents go on in there. If you can, please be patient on these things. They take time because, and it sometimes uh, appears that it takes too much time. But we don't know all of the problems involved either. Until further notice, the public may file claims for old age survivors, disabilities, insurance benefits, 
under the Social Security Program at the Department of Employment, 524 6th Avenue, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Do not phone the office. You must be there in person. Pioneer Insurance reminds you that under the circumstances you may not receive renewal notices, but it's up to you to check your due dates and call the officer, come down and take care of your insurance. Rovier and his staff are at the office ready to take care of you. Uh, he has installed adjusters right in the office to take care of your needs. Although earthquake is excluded in the ordinary policy, as it has always been, Pioneer Insurance Agency is fully prepared to take prompt care of all legitimate and honest claims. To answer your questions and assist you in every way possible, call Broadway 73451, if at all possible. And this is the office in the log building at 5th and G. Rovier is fully confident that he'll build a better anchorage, or that we will. He doesn't intend to do it all by himself. The entire staff of Pioneer Insurance is fully prepared to do their part in getting the job done. And if you have uh, a legitimate claim, why just get in touch with them. Alaska Plumbing and Heating is now open for business. It goes in our other file there. <laughs> Which other file? <laughs> oh, brother. Let's see, this is... Uh, I'm not doing a very good job helping out here either, Ron. I'm getting things all messed up again. <laughs> Don't hit me. Right now, the time is 21 minutes past 3 o'clock in Anchorage. I tell you, I think uh, under the circumstances, we just have to thank you very much for that truck. Yeah, I know you'll be able to use it, and you're running out of time on that truck, so why don't you go ahead? I'll let that uh, ten and a half steak bed go for right now, and uh, we have plenty of other trucks available if you do need them later on. There's no big rush to get trucks, and this gentleman has been very kind, however, in coming down here and waiting while while we uh, can see about anyone's immediate needs. Power has been restored to most areas. Chugak electric system users will uh, out power. Try your breaker boxes to see if the power is up in that point. All you have to do, there are some switches in there as a rule. They breaker boxes, you go in and throw them to the off position, then turn them on again. If that doesn't work and you have done everything you think can possibly be done, then give them a call at Broadway 5005. Broadway 5005. And they'll take uh, fast action on it. Use as little power as possible, will you please? There's really no necessity to use too much electricity at this time, and it is in great demand with very small supply. So don't, uh, I, I have driven past homes in the evening here last night and seen almost all of the lights in the house on. Now, this is ridiculous. You just don't need that much light in a house at a time like this. There's no natural reason for it. Use that electricity sparingly. But Mr. Wallace Craig, either call home or call Elmendorf. <sighs> oh, boy. There's one great tomcat that's recently been living at the home of the Guy McGee family at 2428 Tulick Drive. And it's believed to belong to the Allen family. They're now living on Government Hill with friends. Would they please check with the McGees at Fairfax 23941 on reuniting with their pet? <laughs> yeah, okay. International Building Supply is open now for anyone needing some building supplies. They're located, located at International Airport Road. Mr. and Mrs. Ellis Reynolds of Juneau. Dick is okay. Housing situation is unknown. It's signed Chuck. Walter and Gloria Days of Valdez. Please contact Parks at Fairfax 21398. That's Parks at 21398. Now we're starting to get caught up here for a while. Weatherman says for Anchorage and vicinity, considerable high cloudiness this afternoon through Tuesday. The high this afternoon in the mid-30s. The low tonight will be 15 to 20 degrees. And this is KFQD in Anchorage, Alaska, your civil defense base station during these operations. Passing along to you every time something does arise, the latest and the most official information obtainable.
because it comes direct from the authorized sources of civil events. Also, those of you who may be listening to the Armed Forces Radio, people of you listening up at uh, Elmador, for instance, military dependents there, you're getting it straight from the shoulder, too, because it's all being cleared through the military channels. Everything that goes over the air from both KFQD and from the Armed Forces Radio is official. What do you have there? It's a change, man. No, all right. Some uh, housing available now in Anchorage. A determined kind of spirit, you know, marks the toil of Alaskans, especially now, when electricity was partly restored in the quake ravaged city of Anchorage. An illuminated street sign blinked on. Welcome to Anchorage, the all-American city. <laughs> I hope they turned it off again, too. We have to conserve on that electricity. That's uh, Ron Moore right now is compiling the latest uh, news to come from Associated Press in addition to our local sources. And while he's doing that, and before he brings it to you, I will now go through several of the announcements here that we consider to be most urgent and are filing under a category that we will repeat them every hour until we get action on them in some way, shape, or form. There will be a special and important meeting of the Spinard Rotary Club tonight at 7.30 at Dr. John Miller's office on Fireweed Lane. Now, it's important that every member of the Spinard Rotary be present at this meeting. Dr. John Miller's office on Fireweed Lane, 7.30 tonight. Daryl Waneka of the Salvation Army says they need five to 10 women for making sandwiches and helping in the kitchen. So if you gals aren't doing anything this afternoon, how about helping out at the Salvation Army? They're good folks, and they're sure doing a tough job over there. Anyone knowing anything of Mr. and Mrs. Seton Hubbard from Fognick Island, would you get in touch with their daughter, Nadine Hardy, at Fairfax 25184, or with Mary Ollendorf? Mary Ollendorf, Mary Ollendorf, that name, I know her, and I, oh, I know Mary Ollendorf, of course, she plays the organ over at, uh, yeah, Ellen J. Music Shop. I know her. Right? She's a real good girl. Yeah. Pardon? She's also on our CD net. Oh, is she? Ah, oh, Mary, you son of a gun, you. I didn't know you were a ham operator. She's a good gal. This goes to Elaine Marshall. Please contact Arnie Belts at Broadway 57011, extension 18. He has an urgent message from Juno for you. This is signed Dr. McGowan at the Alaska Native Service Hospital. Now, here's some more housing. Room for a family with one or two children. Full facilities. Mrs. Eugene Hensley at 1503 Otter Street. Shaky, oh no, Shaky Lane Subdivision. I don't, I think I'll scratch that out right away. <laughs> that might chase somebody away. That's a nice area, though. Federal 34456. The very fact that they have room for a family with one or two children means that the Shaky Lane subdivision's on pretty sturdy ground. <laughs> oh, gosh. We haven't heard from Juno yet to verify whether or not they are receiving us there, and I sure would like to hear from them. If we can find out through... Can you do that? Can you... How are you as civil defense uh, with, the, with the rig here? Are you hooked up to Juno or any of these places? Is there any way we can find out just what our, what our broadcasting pattern is? because when we go on with the governor tonight, we'd sure like to know, and also with these messages somehow. Is there any way to do that? Well, I think we might be able to find some of that information out for you. Any of these little places, Ketchikan, Wrangell, any of them that are picking us up, gee, we'd sure like to know about it. Cause we will be using every available facility. This includes AFRS and the ACS lines. For the governor's speech? Right. Great. Well, then, there's no problem there. 8 o'clock tonight, the governor's going to address the people of the state. Bob, I've... Uh, been communicating by a teletype with KFRB in Fairbanks, and they have requested that we allow them a certain time of transmission to uh, transmit messages from Fairbanks regarding persons in Fairbanks concerned about residents in Anchorage and vice versa. Uh, so on the wire or over, over the air, a direct line. So what we tentatively plan to do is discontinue our service 
to KFRB in about 10 minutes and allow a five minute interval to allow them to set up their transmission back to us. Okay. And at 345, if everything goes well, we will then receive from KFRB Fairbanks these messages that they want us to transmit locally. All right, now what time would you estimate that again now? We'll discontinue our service to KFRB and Fairbanks in 10 minutes or at 20 minutes to four. All right. And leave a five minute interval to establish communications from Fairbanks to Anchorage on the same line being utilized now. Uh -huh. And then at 345, we'll carry the messages from KFRB Fairbanks to Anchorage here on QD. Okay, good, Ron. Then all of our uh, listeners here in the Anchorage area, uh, you should be alerted that at 3.45 this afternoon, we will be receiving the message from uh, from Fairbanks and all of the people up there that you know and love will be getting right uh, down through the KFAR station. There. KFRB, isn't it? Right. Yeah, KFRB. Okay. That's nice of them to do that. I'm sure a lot of people here who haven't been able to make direct contact with uh, their friends in Fairbanks will find this just as reassuring as it has been for the people in Fairbanks to hear that the Anchorage residents are okay. Good, Ron. For those of you who do not as yet have uh, water restored, they're working on it. And even if you do have your water restored, it is highly advisable that you treat your water before drinking it. Now, the way to do this, we've repeated it several times, but it is possible that someone does not know yet how to treat their drinking water. and. Uh, very important that you do. Add to your water one teaspoon for every five gallons of water of any Clorox chlorine bleach. Any type of bleach will do. It all uh, contains uh, sodium chloride and that's fine. One teaspoon to five gallons or 16 drops to one gallon, and if you want to make it in smaller quantities yet, say in one quart, then four drops of bleach to one quart. And believe me, it doesn't taste bad at all, not half bad. If you don't treat it that way, then by all means boil it for at least five minutes. Much quicker just to put those little drops of chlorine in there and you're all finished with it. And I mean, Marshall, when you contact Arnie Belts at Broadway 57011, extension 18, about that message, will you please get in touch with us and let us know, okay? All right. Hey, Daryl Wanaka at the Salvation Army, if you have enough women over there, or any time you do get enough, will you please let us know? We need 10 gals over there to help out in the kitchen right now, making sandwiches and whatnot. I don't know how to make a whatnot, man. Please pull the announcement regarding Mr. Craig to contact Elmendorf, okay? Consider yourself pulled. He's already done that. Gerald Simmons, thank you. Gerald Simmons has room for a family of five or six at Fairfax 25042 at 5308 Cope Street. All facilities except food are furnished. She has? Somebody else called it. Oh, good. Charlotte Fitzpatrick. I don't know if Jeannie or Herb or anyone else over there at uh, City Civil Defense is listening, but Charlotte Fitzpatrick has been located on the missing persons list. If you are listening to us and you got that message, why, fine and dandy. We'll know about it shortly, I'm sure. Okay. That was the uh, Gerald Simmons family. They have room for five or six at Fairfax 25042, 5308 Cope Street. They have everything there except food. Tom Thumb Private School will be open on Wednesday at regular hours. Would Pat Potting's sister in Spinard call her in Denver immediately or phone Fort Richardson at Townsend 20239. Pat Potting's sister in Spinard. Please call Denver immediately. Call Pat Pottings in Denver. Thank you. Or phone Fort Richardson at Townsend 20239. We'll repeat that message within the next hour. Would Mr. Wallace, we have him. Thank you, Mr. Wallace Craig. You did it. There is uh, International Building Supplies. 
I mentioned a moment ago, open for business now on International Airport Road. Max Photo. They were formerly located between C and D. I think that's cute. <laughs> Max Photo were formerly located between C and D on 4th. They have a new location. <laughs> and that's at 7th and C Street. They'll be open tomorrow for business. <laughs> 9 to 6. <laughs> that gang's a bunch of nuts down there anyway. <laughs> The Oski Business Supply on Post Road is back in business as of right now. The Salvation Army has not received any of the women that we asked for. Hey, gals, can't all be working this afternoon. How about a, 10 volunteers? Please step forward and get in touch with the Salvation Army right away. I mean, they need your help right now because they have to prepare these sandwiches, you know, for dinner, and they're feeding a lot of people down there. And also, they need help in the kitchen, so any of you gals, you know, you can cook. What the heck? Anybody that can boil water is eligible under these conditions. How about reporting to the Salvation Army right away? The time right now, 24 minutes until 4 o'clock. At 3.45, we are going to have reports from you from KFRB in Fairbanks a station that has been monitoring KFQD uh, as far as I know since the disaster. And they have been just working themselves ragged up there, passing along messages. And I know at one time, we were just putting out blanket, me blanket messages such as, would anyone get in touch with so-and-so in Duluth, Minnesota, or in you know Franklin, North Carolina, or someplace. And uh, these fellows up there were making these calls out because they had lines out and they were passing along the information to ham operators, and they've been going all the time. Well, they're going to continue going, too, and we're going to tie them in and broadcast in reverse now. They've been listening to us. We're going to listen to them at 3.45 this afternoon. And we have a lot of messages up there in Fairbanks for folks here in Anchorage. If you have loved ones or friends in that area, it's a pretty sure bet that they're going to be trying to get in touch with you through those facilities. So keep your dial at 730-KFQD uh, here in Anchorage, and uh, we'll have it for you. 345 this afternoon. Thank you. Please stop using sewers between 3rd and 9th Avenues from Gamble to L Street. And in the inlet area, the water is backing up and the workmen are fighting a losing battle. Do not use your sewers. Now, this includes all the fixtures, the bathroom and the kitchen. Very important now. Pay attention to this one. Please stop using your sewers between 3rd and 9th Avenues from Gamble to L Street. Those poor fellows down there are getting swamped and they're just being run right out by that water. Thank you. They're fighting a losing battle down there, according to this report. So by all means, stop using your sewers in there. The water I know is available, but uh, don't flush your toilets. Don't uh, put water down the sinks. Don't use your sewers in any way, shape, or form. Let these fellows get their work done. Or it's going to be a very bad situation there. That's the areas, once again, between 3rd and 9th Avenues, from Gamble to L Street in the inlet area. Don't use those sewers. Mananuska Valley Bank employees bring your lunches and water. They'll be open for business. 7th and G in the parking lot. <laughs> That's right, if you want to cash a check, just go out to the parking lot. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful, the way people are reacting to this. I think a lot of uh, folks are getting over the shock of it, too. Talking to one lady yesterday, and she said, well, you know, the shock really didn't hit me until today. This was yesterday, of course, Sunday. And she says, gee, I just felt like an old wet kick rag. Just felt like uh, somebody had rung me out. And I suppose there are a lot of people who felt that way Saturday. And a lot of people that'll feel that way tomorrow and today. But gradually, the smiles are coming back to the faces of everyone, and... Uh, starting to hear them crack jokes a little bit more about this thing, and that's the way to be. If you carry the burden too long, don't laugh it off. 
be in real serious trouble. Lay down on my couch now and we will talk about it there. Two homes available, one bedroom and one three bedroom. With all utilities, contact Don Schultz. I don't think I'll turn out, hey, <laughs> let's come over here. <laughs> Call these people up and tell them we need, we need the house. <laughs> I'm working on one in there, of course. Are you? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Can you borrow my headphones for a minute? You can even have my head. It's not doing me any good. It's not doing me any good today. Two homes available. Seems funny not to hear those other people talking there. You know? Yeah. <laughs> You're monitoring another line. You get used to hearing them talking in the background. Two homes are available. It's a one bedroom and a three bedroom home. All facilities. Don Schultz has been kind enough to offer this one. Oh, hold on, we have an urgent. This goes to Clayton Esslinger, to Clayton Esslinger, 2515 Captain Cook Boulevard. Please call Chaplain Armstrong at Elmendorf Air Force Base. He has a wire for you from your son. The number to call, Skyline 21222. Skyline 212. Two, two. I'll only give you the one number. No, I better give you them both. Skyline, the alternate number is Skyline 38351. Jot them down now, Captain, and you won't forget them. That's Clayton Esslinger. Please call Chaplain Armstrong. They have a wire from your son. I'll repeat this within the next hour. Okie doke. Hey, we're going to hear from the boys up in Fairbanks here in just a few minutes. The boys and the gals. They'll have messages for us from your friends and neighbors up there. In just about uh, three minutes, we'll be tying them in. Two homes are available. One one-bedroom and a three-bedroom with all utilities. Don Schultz. Now the number, Broadway 45572. And he'll be there until 4.30 today, for the next 45 minutes. After 4.30, will you please go to 1106, 36th place. Cash Auto and Truck Parts is open for business. Good. I might suggest, you know, we've talked about how to treat your water, how to uh, turn on your lights, how to turn on your gas, all these things. I might suggest that you do one other thing in addition. I know there Everybody's been busy and all that. Will you please get a pencil and a piece of paper and put them in your pocket. Keep them with you at all times. Then, if a message comes over for you, you can real quick pull a part. Belt. A belt. B-E-L-T. And you don't miss them that way. I don't know how many times since this thing all began. Uh, that paper and pencil in my pocket has come in so handy, and I, I think it will for you, too. Oh, you just lost that up there. Bob, I understand that uh, KFRB in Fairbanks has now requested that we hold off until 4.15 on the reverse broadcast, and I just talked to ACS, and everything is being prepared for it. Earlier, we had planned for 3.45, but to allow the uh, communications network to be set up, we'll plan for the direct contact from Fairbanks at 4.15. Okay, thanks, Ron. And we'll have news in the interim. We will have a uh, complete newscast then coming up here pretty shortly, huh? Right. Okay. Custom displays at 512 West Fireweed Lane will provide signs on very short notice. Uh, these would be emergency signs if you need them. Was that KFQ, uh, KFRB that you were uh, yeah. <laughs> monitoring there on that? <laughs> uh, Giving okay. you uh, we're back now, monitoring the Civil Defense Headquarters down in the city. Oh, can we? Gee, you know all about those things, don't you? <laughs> He's a nice guy. Ron Moore, KFQD staff. Oh, ho! Dennis O'Day walks in with his white Civil Defense hat on. Hello there, Chief. Been to sleep lately? When was the last time you were in bed, anyway? Oh, no, Friday morning. Friday morning? Yeah. Well, that's not bad. 
What do you run on? Atomic energy or something? Hey. What is it with you? Hi, can I put a bouquet in here? What kind? Roses? Well, one of those, one of those things where, where something is well deserved, Bob. My house was a good it was a good two blocks between the road and my house. And uh, anybody has been out to Turnigan, they know there's deep, deep, deep crevasses, and there's, there's nothing but a mess out there. Those boys went to work this morning, Bob, and I drove my car out this afternoon. They're working. Thank you very much. We have an emergency public interest message from the Supreme Court, the state of Alaska. It comes from Thomas B. Stewart, administrative director, by John Peterson, assistant. All Alaska court system personnel are to report for work at 8.30 p.m. tomorrow, March 31st. Please wear working clothes. I don't know by that if they mean, you know, dress for normal work or wear clothes that would uh, allow you to dig in there and clean up. Personnel with family emergencies may be excused after reporting to their supervisors. Enter the court building at the alley entrance nearest K Street. If you identify yourself to the military guard at 3rd and K, you'll be permitted to enter. Of special interest to court personnel, the paychecks are here and will be distributed tomorrow. That'll bring them in. <coughs> the Anchorage Court building will not be open to the public tomorrow. In fact, uh, we had the message that all court business has been postponed indefinitely until they can get themselves squared away there. Anybody waiting to stand trial, you can just have a little reprieve. Another notice will be given as soon as the Superior Court, Magistrate Court, and District Recorder, as well as the Vital Statistics Office, is ready for the transaction of business. They'll also report that uh, message again within a short period of time. Well, how do you, Robert? Hi, thank you, sir. Have a one bedroom apartment for you if you need it, an efficiency apartment for two. Both uh, are furnished. Oh, we have two then. I see there's one and one. That makes two? Yeah. <laughs> I think it does. Let me check. <laughs> How that, does that work out? Not too well. Not too well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. One efficiency apartment for two and one one-bedroom apartment. Uh, both of these are furnished with utilities, and you can uh, contact Fairfax 21668. 21668. We're making headway on that news, Ron? Yes, I think I'd like to, of course, I would like to stay in contact with our city civil defense communication with uh, our...